I think that's the that's the thing that you welcome in. You know, it's like when you when you open the door and your grandma yells at you, you're gonna let let the good air out, you're gonna let these flies in. Sometimes the flies come in when you have an open door. And the WNBA right now has an open door. Sometimes you're gonna get bad actors. Sometimes you're gonna get people who feel like they know everything, even though they have a baseline knowledge of what's going on. And I think that's a natural human thing, right? I'm not saying what Pat McAfee says is a natural human thing. I'm just saying from a broader perspective, sometimes people feel like they know more than they do. They open their mouths and then it turns out that they don't know, you know, 10% of what they should. I think this Caitlin Clark thing is so interesting to me because it's so much less about Caitlin Clark and so much more about us. It's so much more about our own sensibilities of race and gender and yes, jealousy and yes, who gets highlighted and spotlighted. And I think all of those things to me, Michael, to me, mm -hmm. all of those things are not bad. I think it's human nature. I think people went out of their way to say, nobody's jealous of Caitlin Clark. It's just competition. I tend to believe there's nothing wrong with jealousy. I think we give athletes all this credit. I'm gonna say all this credit. We talk about there's nothing wrong with admitting it. How about that? Yeah, Maybe there's nothing, nothing wrong, with, wrong with admitting it. It's, no, I think I think it's human. I really do. I think it's human. I think when we talk about Draymond Green being petty and NBA players being petty, we celebrate that. But for whatever reason, those same qualities and attributes, we can't apply that to women in the WNBA and frame it within competitiveness and frame it within humanity and say it's natural that if women have been putting bricks in the ground for years and haven't been reaping the rewards, and then Caitlin Clark comes in, who looks a lot different, who brings a different audience, and she's getting rewards before she's putting bricks in this particular ground, yeah, that's a natural feeling of jealousy and frustration, and you would want to take it to him. Michael Holly, you know this like you know this. In our business, when you see, if we notice that someone has skipped steps to get to a certain place, and they become yeah. the next and newest and hottest thing, we like, hey, man, what make them so special? What, right. you know, what, what are they doing that's different than other people who have been putting bricks in this ground for for years for a and long decades. time there's yeah. natural Pay there's their natural frustration that yeah. comes with that and i don't think there's anything wrong with that but as long as the competitiveness doesn't go overboard and go into trying to hurt somebody but if you want to try to take it to them and try to make them prove to you that they are worth and valid all those other things i have zero problem with competitive jealousy Natalie. it happens all the time in sports and women's basketball Natalie. should be no different than any other sport that we have Correct. Natalie, it I, be I have, I've seen you uh, shaking your head a couple of times, Natalie. Uh, what, what, yes. What, 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 so what, what's the, what's the head shaking about? Uh, inform us. Bring us in. Bring us in. With Did I say all, something with, offensive? No, but it's just like with all due respect to Vincent and all the men, like I just, this is women's business, like just being frank. And that doesn't mean that y'all can't talk about it. That's not, that's not what we're saying. But I think there is a propensity and a tendency when it's woman to automatically ascribe something as jealousy. So yes, they're like the way Vincent described it as there's nothing wrong with that and that's normal and it's human, sure. And is there probably jealousy from certain people? Yes, but we don't know that. And the problem is, is that the prevailing narrative has been that it's jealousy. They, you know, that's what the prevailing narrative has been. And it's summed up all the players as being jealous, right? And there can be multiple feelings and multiple emotions. And I think Monica McNutt made a great point of this yesterday and where she said like, we need to allow for more than one thing to be true. And you know, she was on TV yesterday and I watched Shannon Sharp and Stephen A try to push her to say, say it, say it, they're jealous. Like it, it happens to me on social media. It happens to every woman that's covering it. Men are insistent on us acknowledging and saying these women are jealous of her. What has created the resentment, if to the extent that there is any, is how the media is covering her and, and, and the insistence that people bow down to this woman and treat her like a savior. They're not saying that, but that's the way they're acting when they suggest um, 
it, it be taken light, light, lighter on her, right? You have NBA players going on podcasts and saying, oh, you know, like, don't do this, don't do that. And, and people are like, what do you want them to let her win the game? And it's like, no, but you know, you gotta, would you ever do that, Jeff Teague, who was saying that on his podcast? Are you gonna ever go easy on another player in, the, in, in, in competition? It's these kinds of crazy statements that keep being made. Everyone understands that Caitlin Clark is box office. We understand that. We understand what it does for the league. But it is a complete lie and incorrect when the, everyone says she saved the league. The league has been growing. It has had. Well, who said that? Well, who said they say? Well, who said she saved the league? She, like, like, I think that's right. she has. She has brought more eyeballs to the league, and I think that clearly. Right. She no, but those, the ratings, those, those, the ratings those, have been those, going up for years. Right, but those are comments yeah. that are being made, and I'm saying that's, oh, that's being made yeah. in the media. And when people say something like, "Oh, they they needed this, they needed this star," th th this is my issue, right? There are a lot of people talking about the WNBA right now, who do not have the historical knowledge of it and do not have an understanding of the issues. And I feel. But how, but but, but but why is that? But why is that a problem? And because I'm gonna I'm gonna that, explain why. I'm gonna explain why. This is the this is right. the door being opened that right. Vinny so talked I'm gonna, about. I'm gonna explain why because there's not proper context for the conversations, right? So I agree. Like when we when we always talk about who's the face of the league, we do this in the NBA, right? People say who's gonna be the next face? Who's gonna be the next face? Right? And we had all this talk about Aunt Edwards because it's like. Well, the people choose who the next face is. Like, the media can't dictate who it's going to be, right? That's an organic thing. So I get it. As someone who is, y'all know me, I am pro Steph Curry. There is not anyone who appreciates why people would love Caitlin Clark. I get it, right? So I understand the people are like, wow, she's exciting to watch. Understood, right? But there, there seems to be this thinking that, from some, I'm not saying you, Vinny, I'm not saying you, Michael Holly, but there's this thinking from some that there were not exciting players in the league before. And what we're not understanding is the reason why you didn't know about some of these players, right? There wasn't an investment in women's basketball. If you, you ever notice when they start reporting all of the ratings about Caitlin Clark, it always says like the ones that came out today for the Sky Fever game, the third best in 22 years. It's never the, I don't wanna say it's never, but it's often not the first ever. Because when, when the WNBA first started, and in college, when, when women's basketball started, there was a lot of excitement for it. There was a lot of enthusiasm. It had a lot of momentum. And then all of a sudden, that momentum died. And no one ever mm. questions why. They just say people weren't interested. But it died because it went to cable. It died because once it went to cable, that cable network made a decision not to invest in that product, not to Investment. give access to it, not to Good promote word. it, not to do that. So then people did not hear about these women. The stories of these women were not told. They were not promoted. So you don't know how exciting of a player Candace Parker was. You don't know how exciting of a player Meyer Moore was, right? And so all of that happens. So now Caitlin Clark comes along and you guys are saying, nope, not you guys. I'm saying the, the talking points right, are, right, are, right. are, oh, we haven't seen this. No one can do. Well, Caitlin Clark, if she would have came along five, 10 years ago, I don't know that she would have had this wave because the investment was not there. And let's be clear, part of the reason this started is because people have been working behind the scenes, but it was also what happened a few years ago in the college tourney when Sedona, a player, brought light to the conditions of the women players where yeah. they were not receiving the same treatment and so much attention came on that that they had to start using the March Madness logo. They had to start promoting the college game more and the college game got all this attention and then it trickled up to the WNBA and there were also efforts going on in the WNBA. I think that context matters. It matters to a lot of people but yeah, who have it, been around yeah. and I think it matters. But yeah. Yeah, context matters, but uh, tell me, uh, uh, Vinny and Natalie, how you feel about this? Look, Nat Natalie, I agree with you, and I, I agree with you, but then, I, but I'm going in a different direction here. I agree that context matters in everything. I love context, but probably too much. I love it. All right, but um, I think the problem is that 
if you want context, context will not always be there with a spike in popularity. It's, they, they generally don't connect to one another. So you, Natalie, with your knowledge of the WNBA and the NBA, you can have context in any conversation because you've been in it and you understand it. But somebody who's coming along and saying, hey, wait a minute. I like Caitlin Clark. I just watched Iowa a couple of years ago and now she's going to the Indiana Fever. I don't even know who the coach of the Indiana Fever is. I didn't even know Indiana sure. Fever had a team. I'm going to start watching. That That's fine. Is, there are a lot, but there, but. But that, that's fine. That's fine for the but, fan. That's not okay for the media. Who, okay, that's different. Fit, okay, right. And that's fine. what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a fans. Of course, we all come to but, the game for different reasons. But, but there are going to be some media people like that too. Right. But then, some media but, then like that too. but then you're telling falsities, and we're going to call it out. And that's all that's happening think, right now. I, yeah. I, I think. I think this is. I think this is what, from my perspective, because I haven't even able been able to really watch game so far because I've been so knee deep in the NBA playoff. You see clips here and there, but I haven't been able to go into it. I almost compare it to like diving into something like like Michael Holly, like, you know, me and you love music, right? If the first time you heard Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life, you're like, man, this is the greatest thing ever. And you haven't heard inner visions or you haven't heard talking book or you haven't heard fulfilling this. And then you go back and say it. I think sometimes what happens is whether it's media or fans, the heat of the opposition is so strong when someone says, oh, Caitlin Clark is this, and there's so much pushback. There's not a lot of grace and space given to welcome whatever these yeah. audiences are, whether it's media or whether it's fans. It's almost like, you know what it's like, Michael Holly? It's like watching your favorite band, right? You will see your favorite band at like this little bitty 500 seat theater and then a year later, they're selling out 70,000 70, seat stadiums. You're going to have some people in there who don't know the context, who don't know the history, who don't know as much as you do, but they spend money all the same. That's the way the thing grows. Everything doesn't grow at the same pace with the right. same people. It's no, it's no different. It doesn't make anybody no, right or wrong. You come on when you I come disagree. on. No, but I really strongly disagree with this, and this is why, because... Well, can, I, can I make and, a point? Can I make something real quick? Go ahead. Real quick? Go ahead. No, uh, just before, on the point that we were talking about earlier on the jealousy thing, let me make something clear. I wasn't saying that that was the prevailing emotion. I wasn't trying to communicate that it's the emotion that everybody feels. I was saying that that's something that is a factor into it. It doesn't have to be dominant. I just think it's something that's there. And to me, that's okay. It doesn't mean that it doesn't prevail over competition or all the other factors. I just wanted to make sure that because you went straight into this is women's business and I felt like it was a quality that was going to be ascribed if I didn't correct myself on I, that. No, and I'm glad you did. And I, I was trying to make the point that like, but that's been the predominant narrative. When Chuck when Chuck Barkley comes out and he's like, y'all y'all girls, you know, stop hating on Caitlin Clark. And, and 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 LeBron James says what he says. Everyone keeps focusing on this quote unquote hate, this this jealousy. And so when the Kennedy Carter thing happens, right? Most of us, like we're DMing the people who are around, we're like, oh my God, Kennedy, please, why? Because now this is confirmation bias. They're going to take this and say, see, right? But before Kennedy Carter, you can't give me all the examples of the hate. You can't give me all the examples of, of the stuff that's happening. It's just something you're claiming is there without real value. People said Diana Taurasi was hating on Caitlin Clark because she, she said the girl was going to have to adjust to the leak. And by the way, she she didn't only say it about Caitlin Clark. She said it about Caitlin Clark and Camilla Cardozo. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, and to me, it's people who don't know Diana Taurasi, don't know how she talks, don't know her personality. So they heard that and they said, it's the way she said it. Well, that's Diana. And that's how she talks. By the way, by the way, 20 year, 20 year veteran Diana Taurasi, 20 years in the WNBA. So it's been going on for more than a few years and a three time champion. But I mean, but Natalie, I don't want you to lose the point because you said you disagree with Vinny's analogy of I do. the 500, the 500 seat little club to the yes. 70,000 seat stadium. Why? Because I've, I felt like I've heard this from a lot of people who are new and I want to be very clear because I appreciate you giving me respect saying I have this knowledge, but I am still a newer person to covering this league. I've been covering women's basketball for about two years. Right. I, I'm an NBA girly. That's how I started. And I started on the men's side and I had to go in. I had to learn. I had to get the history. I had to understand things. I was welcome to the space. 
right? No one was like, what are you doing? You don't know what you're talking about. I've seen people like Nakayas and other media members transfer over and it be fine. It is the people who come in, like the guy who got banned in Indiana, who come in with yeah. the weirdness. It's, it's certain NBA people who come over and think that their expertise should be given some greater credibility because they, they've built that over there. But you haven't built that in the WNBA community. It's those who come and it's like, well, look, I'm giving you coverage now. It's like this thing, well, look, you're getting it now. And usually when you see that resistance and that pushback, it's that. People understand that people are new and they understand that and um, like people are not going to know everything. But as a media member, to me, this is not about women's basketball or not. Like, I'm not talking about fans. I'm saying as a media member, to me, it yeah. should be a baseline. If you're going to cover something, you have to come with the requisite knowledge. And what we've been saying is like, and Monica McNutt made this point yesterday, and I've actually said this to a few people when I've heard it, because it's mostly men I hear this from saying this. I'm like, well, welcome to the world of being a woman. Because when we step foot into covering men's sports, we are expected to know everything, know every detail, have a certain level of knowledge. Oh, and point. then and then we are over criticized for little good things. Point. And so I'm just saying like, I no, like you need to come to this with respect and treat this with respect how you're going to cover something and if you're not then yeah you're going to get pushed back and I think that's valid for a media member for fans fans are going to be fans all right let, let me ask you guys this uh, as we as we wrap this up and Greg Doyle is the uh, Indianapolis Sorry. star columnist you were you were referring yes. to yes how about the columnist banned Vinny banned for the season you ain't allowed to cover Caitlin Clark and if you come within 200 yards of Caitlin Clark we may have to call the police I mean you got to stay away because right. you were a weirdo during the press conference hey thank you for watching brother from another if you haven't hit that subscribe button go ahead and do that now don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.